I actually can't believe I'm paying money to watch this absolute fucking awful commentary from Stan Sport. Okay? The rugby on, on, on display was absolutely world class. The, the talent is out of this world this in this game. And it's, it was completely ruined by John Kerwin and the commentary team sucking each other's dick in commentary instead of actually doing their jobs and talk about the game and talk about scrums and talk about what is actually happening. Let me just give you an idea how fucking absurd this shit was. On one hand of the scrum, you have Ethan De Groot, the starting loose end prop for the All Blacks, right? Probably one of the best loose fair props in the world. And then on the other side, you got Tuonga Fasi, an upcoming guy who wants to secure that All Black starting position, who's been struggling to score in that All Black starting position. But the one thing he's really, really good at is scrummaging. And it was an absolute warfare out there on the field. The Blues was doing such a good job of earning those penalties, giving the hard the scrum a world of trouble and a world of hurt. Like the, the amount of talent in that scrum is out of this world. National teams around the world can only pray that they have props this level in their national teams. Tier 1 nations, I'm not talking about like Ireland or something. I'm not talking about like, you know, Italy or, 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 or like Georgia or something. Or like, you know, Tier 1 nations in the world would, would cream themselves if they had props at this level playing for them. And yet, the Stan Sport commentary with John Kerwin Sir John Cohen, by the way, was bashing the scrum live on TV. Oh, it's a waste of time. We need to speed the game up. We don't want to say this. By the way, by the way, John Cohen, if you think rugby league is a better sport, right? If you, if you think the reason why rugby league is doing better in this part of the world because it doesn't have scrummaging, let me ask you a question, John. What's the most popular sport in America? NFL. And last time I checked, NFL has 60 minutes of playtime and it goes on for three hours because they literally have two hours of stoppage. And yet it makes more money, more popular, that both Rugby League and Rugby Union combined. Why is that? Why is that the case? Why is that? Why is the game that is more, has more stoppage than actual gameplay more popular than, than rugby? Maybe the way the product is presented is a better better quality. Maybe they don't have commentators bitching and whining and sucking each other's dick, patting each other's egos, live on commentary. Maybe they, like, they, they appreciate the, the people that work in the sport actually like NFL, believe it or not. They like the sport. Maybe they actually like the sport. And they're passionate about the sport. They're passionate about every aspect of the sport. And they present a product that is good. It's not about how good, how long the stoppage is. It's about what you give to the fans after stoppage. And maybe that's why the NFL can have two hours of stoppage in a 60 minute game. And still make more money, more popular, have more fans all around the world than rugby. And guess what, John? The fan experience that you're presenting to me in this game 
was absolutely atrocious. I have never seen a sport commentary this bad in my whole fucking life. There was like, there were, you literally didn't do the job. I actually had to mute the fucking sound because the commentators were not doing the job at all during the scrums other than complaining. Oh, Kerwin, if, if you were in World Rugby, this would have stopped. We should vote him into World Rugby and have this, oh, this constant waste of time stopped. You do realize Angus Garner is the best referee in the world. And it's refereeing a scrum that consists literally some of the best props in the world. Both props could be ranked top 10 in the world. Ethan the group is probably top 5, maybe top 3 in the world. And yet we didn't get any of that commentary. We didn't get any of that. We got John Cohen is amazing. He's going to save the game. Let's put him in World Rugby. This is not what we want to see. This is slowing the game down. We want people to, to play more rugby. Rugby league is a better game than rugby union. Whilst none of that, none of the intricacies, none of the reasons why the best re referee in the world thinks that the scrum needs to be reset is doing that. Why the best props in the world what is going, what's the battle between the best props in the world? Nah, we didn't get any of that explanation. We didn't get any of that in the commentary. All we got is how Sir John Kerwin has the biggest fucking ego in the world and he's going to save the game if, he, if, if only he was given more power in World Rugby. If only he was working at World Rugby, guys. If John Kerwin was working at World Rugby or he just have to have a word with World Rugby, all of this boring scrum shit would have stopped that's why we're going to commentary, guys. This absolutely amazing game of rugby, completely ruined by the commentary. Like, how could you, how could you, like, honestly, the, the, the level of rugby that's played in this game is better than any competition other than test rugby in the world. The amount of like, there was a play just before halftime when Steven Perifetta, every other team in the world, would have kicked the boy out after being under the pump for about 40 minutes. Steven Perifetta had the balls, the grapefruit, the size of, I don't know, North Island, I guess. That's probably a reference the Kiwis understand. Uh, no, actually, South Island, because South Island is a big one. Uh, and then he ran the ball from inside his own try line to go all the way 70 meters down the field, linking up with his teammates, good passes between him and his winger to get himself a penalty and a yellow card. And then following it up with a good line out, good set piece, another good penalty and a try to go in half time, 22 points to 15 lead. Like that is the quality absolute sublime level of the quality that is on display. Yet we got the commentators bashing the game live. How do these people have a job? How does John Kerwin have a fucking job? How does any of these commentators have a fucking job? If you don't love the game, go commentate something else. You're talented enough, right? You can just just go commentate another sport. Go get a job with rugby league. If that's what you love the most, John Kerwin, you played rugby league before. Go get a job with rugby league. And see how long you last before you start complaining and get fired. Unbelievable. It's just unbelievable. No other sport in the world will pay people to bash their own game, to bash their own product, live on TV. If I was a shareholder at Stan Sport, what would I think? You're literally paying people to go live on TV and bash the product that you're paying. 
in front of millions of your customers, telling them another sport that's not on your fucking platform, by the way. Rugby league is not on your platform at all. It's better than what you're watching. Despite the fact that the quality of the game is absolutely world class in front of you. It's absolutely absurd. And by the way, I know a lot of you guys are going to say, oh, well, God, they just want to speed up the game, man. Like, they don't want too much stoppage. You can talk about that after the game. You can talk about that, you know, in your panel shows. But do you think it's appropriate to not say anything about what is happening in the scrum and bash the game and say how John Kerwin needs to, to speak to World Rugby about fixing this issue? When, by the way, there are millions of fans out there, just like me, we like watching the scrums. We don't care about the scrum being a bit slow. We like watching big men destroy each other in a contest of strength. Believe it or not, that's entertaining to a lot of us. And a, and a lot of us don't watch rugby league like me for a reason. Because rugby league is fucking boring without the set piece. How many rugby league games do you think I watch a year? Three. State of origin. That's it. I don't even watch the rugby league final. Anyway, I had another video made where I was yelling so hard, people were walking down the street was literally telling me to shut up. Um, I don't know if I put that video up, but man, this was an absolute magnificent game between the two teams. I mean, the Blues was under the pump of the first half. Harlanders, Reese Patchell, Princess Patchell, somehow managed to sneak through customs. Uh, they probably had him in a suitcase or something, and uh, he was able to get through the Australian customs after the atrocity he committed against Australia in the 2019 Rugby World Cup, right? I don't know how he's able to, he's allowed to get through customs, but he did, okay? So somebody fell asleep at their job today, right? Not just Sir Cohen, John Cohen, but somebody else at the Melbourne airport fell, fell, uh, fell asleep at their job. So yeah, I was a little bit upset to see Reese Patchell on play, but you know, putting my personal biases aside, he was actually pretty good, okay? He, he's something that I think Warren Gatlin will be licking his chops, wanting to get back into the, to the current Welsh side. Uh, really, like, you know, he's probably really wanting back right now because the current Welsh team is actually building towards a very, like, offloady style, like a New Zealand style of rugby, a bit of a free flow running style of rugby. And the way that Rhys Patchell managed the game, especially in the first half, very, fits that build perfectly for Warren Gatlin. And I think Warren Gatlin will be just like, oh my God, I can't wait for him to get back. Uh, hopefully he gets back home too. In fact, yeah, like this, th that, that, uh, that first half, the way he managed the game, the way he, he worked around the, 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 the way he was able to take on the gang line and then get the offload to set up his teammates for a try was something that I actually haven't seen before from him when he played for Wales, which is something that, yeah, again, new skills that has been developing uh, while I was playing in New Zealand with the Highlanders. With that being said, I do think that you know, when it comes to, you know, the, 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 the New Zealand rugby, they really shouldn't give the number 10 spot in a super rugby team position, in the, especially in the starting position, to someone that can't be available for the All Blacks. And you're just literally, you know, building talent for, uh, for, for, yeah, for, for a rival team if, against the All Blacks. And, and then you're also taking away an opportunity for your local team to, uh, talent to develop. So I really don't like this. Um, I mean, you know, I, I, I understand the Holland is a team that's struggling a little bit, but, uh, you know, the, the, you know, we're losing Richie Mwonga, Bowden Barrett might be coming, is coming back. But, you know, that number 10 spot, if Bowden Barrett and De Demi McKenzie gets a bit hurt, really looking a little bit lacky, really lacking a little bit. And also Bowden Barrett is like, what, 32 now? He's, he's going to be retiring soon as well. So really, you just have D-Mac that's the only one that's building towards the future. 
and you really haven't got anything coming up. Like the, the, the pipeline is running a little bit dry there. So I really felt like this was a little bit of a, whilst yes, it's entertaining, it's good for Highlander rugby fans, but really in the long run, I really don't think this is a good idea to bring in international, like other countries, players to, to fill in key positions. Um, yeah, it, it, it's in prominent super rugby, especially with the All Blacks. I mean, if, if Chris Patrick wants to play the Western Force, or like, you know, one of Pacific Guard, or like, you know, that's that's fine, right? But, you know, Highlanders, I felt like it's one of the key teams that's going to contribute to the All Blacks. I really shouldn't be, uh, really should be giving out these key positions to to other, to people who are not available to play for the All Blacks, essentially. That is just my thought. And uh, yeah, so this was uh, just uh, the, the numbers. And again, I don't know why the website is changing, but who cares? Um, five tries apiece. Um, Highlanders have to make a lot more tackles than the Blues. 237 to the Blues, 119. 21 missed tackles, 19 missed tackles for the Blues. The Highlanders was like winning pretty, pretty, pretty good in the first half. They missed all, like all of the goal kicks in the first half, which was really heartbreaking. They could have been 25 points to, to, uh, to, to eight going to half time, but they just completely slipped away. Three missed, uh, conversions by, what's his name? Three missed conversions by Gilbert. One missed penalty by Patchell, Princess Patchell, and um, they were going to halftime with only 15 points. And like I said, the Blues just showed so much heart, tremendous talent. They were so far down. Every other, finally, they were under the pumps as well, right in front of the try line, just uh, as the buzzer went off. They got a big tackle on Groot, knocked the ball off him, and you're like, yeah, surely you kicked it out. Nah. Uh, you're, I mean, you'd be pretty happy to go after, under so much pressure to go in half time. Uh, what, what was that at time at that point? That was 15 points leveled. You'd be pretty happy to go in at 15 points apiece. But um, nah, Stephen Perifetta with the 10 jersey on his back, stepping out to play, you know, receiving the ball inside his own goal line, and then just looked up and everybody's like, got to kick it out, right? He's like, nah, not me. He ran and then set the Blues out for a try. Yeah, amazing, amazing stuff as well. Just um, the second half, uh, I had the muted commentary, like I said, but I thought the second half, the Blues came out really strong. The Highlanders tried to catch up a little bit late in the, in the game, but it wasn't just not enough. Kicks in play, 18-20. There wasn't much kicking game. Like I said, I was surprised that with Reese Patchell in the team, they were transitioning him into that New Zealand style and not really using that you know European style that we're more used to, especially the Welsh style of rugby with a lot of kicking, a lot of high balls. A conversions are just atrocious. Penalty was atrocious as well. Uh, the Blues did lo lose a couple of conversions themselves, but overall much better than the Highlanders. Line out, three liner loss for Highlanders. The set piece contest was absolutely brutal for both teams. The forwards were just absolutely belting each other as well with a lot of hard hitting tackles. Uh, and in the end of the day, I do think that the the Blues forwards definitely had a bit more physicality over the over the Highlanders, and really just was probably the difference, especially in the second half between the two teams. Uh, eight penalties conceded for Highlanders, 11 against the Blues. Just let me refresh this to make sure that's correct. Yep. Eight, actually eight against eight. Uh, I don't know why the, the, the thing's not fresh properly, but um, I'm pretty sure there were two yellow cards. Oh, yes. All right. Anyway, eight and 11, two yellow cards apiece. Both yellow cards are due to repeated penalties, uh, you know, uh, kind of like just pressure penalties. Um, there was one, like I said, one Steven Ferro, the one just before halftime where Steven Perifetta ran down the field uh, and then he basically forced... Highlanders to commit a cynical foul and then give him a yellow card as well, leading into a try. And then late in the second half, the Blues gave away the yellow card due to some return penalties from uh, from the from the Highlanders. And uh, yeah, that's uh, kind of like the game. Uh, don't know what to say, but um, Costan Sututu hat trick this game, absolutely amazing. Uh, he had two tries last week as well, and. Uh, Khan had a, had a rough start this game. Hoskins Sututu like missed the kickoff and then leading into Harlem to scoring a try right away. But uh, he like, you know, forced, fought himself back into the game and really finished strong for the Blues. Um, I don't know what else to say, man. Like I'm just a little bit um, burnt out by the amount of ass kicking, ass kissing amongst the commentators between themselves. I mean, I, mean, uh, I don't know. Maybe they have their pants off during commentary. I don't know. But uh, let me know your thoughts about this. I mean... Yeah, I think that needs to be changed. Like, it needs to fucking stop. Like, it's just not acceptable to have commentators bashing the game live on TV um, in, you know, in Super Rugby Super Round. 
um, in front of an empty stadium. And uh, yeah, let me know your thoughts, guys. Thanks for watching. Cheers.